Yo, what is good, Knicks Nation? Welcome back to Knicks Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I'm going to give you guys my recap to the Milwaukee Bucks versus New York Knicks game that just got wrapped up. The Knicks came out on top, and this was a very interesting game because both teams were banged up with injuries. But as we know, the Knicks came out on top, and unfortunately for the New York Knicks, we have a devastating injury. Mitchell Robinson has another fracture in his body, and this one is in his foot. He'll be reevaluated tomorrow to get the more extent of it and how much time he will miss, but this is definitely a devastating injury. I just finished watching the post-game interview with Derrick Rose and Mike Breen and Clyde Frazier. Mike Breen asked Derrick Rose his thoughts of Mitchell Robinson fracturing his foot. Derrick Rose obviously did not even know that he broke his foot and he found out live and he was devastated. Derrick Rose was heartbroken. He got emotional and he started getting choked up a little bit and he had to leave. And that tells you how much this team is connected and how much of a big blow Mitchell Robinson is for the New York Knicks. So I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the entire game. And before I do so, if you guys are new to Knicks Media, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you guys want to check me out over on Instagram and Twitter, that is at nyknicks underscore media. And if you guys enjoy the video, please do not forget to thumbs it up. With that being said, let's jump right into my recap video. So as we know, the Milwaukee Bucks were so decimated with injuries and the Knicks were decimated with injuries as well, but the Bucks were way more. I mean, they had Giannis Antetokounmpo out, Chris Middleton, Holiday, Bobby Portis. I mean, they're, like I think they had four starters out and three rotational guys, and they had a lot of players starting. I think they had three players starting for the first time ever in their career. Thanasis Antetokounmpo, former New York Knicks, had a career night on us. He had like four for four from downtown. It was a dog. But this Milwaukee Bucks team is a pesky bunch, even though it was a lot of guys that usually do not get this many minutes. And the Knicks, we did not have Julius Randle tonight. He had a contused quad because last game he got need from Alfred Payton. So he's day to day. Luckily, that's nothing too severe. And Reggie Bullock was still out today. So our lineup was really interesting to starting off. It was Alfred Payton, Alec Burks, RJ Barrett, Taj Gibson at the four with Nerlens, uh, Mitchell Robinson to start at center actually. And then Mitch got hurt, unfortunately. So this was one of those games where it was going to be bizarre. And it was one of those games that the Knicks should definitely win because of the injuries to the Milwaukee Bucks. Even though we had our own injuries, our all-star, our best player on the entire team was injured today. But the amount of people that are out in Milwaukee, it was one of those games we had to win. And it was a pesky, really hard-fought game all the way till the wire. You got to give the Milwaukee Bucks a ton of credit. They played zone all game, which was pretty wild. Usually teams play the zone against the Knicks, but they go in and out of man-to-man -man and zone. But they played zone from the beginning to the end, which was really insane. But let's get into some individual performances for the New York Knicks. RJ Barrett, he finished with 21 points, 7 assists, 7 rebounds. So this was a very all-around great game from RJ Barrett. He did shoot the ball pretty inefficiently. However, 8 of 22 from the field, 1 steal, 3 of 10 from downtown, 2 for 2 from the free throw line. So RJ, he had to chuck up a lot of shots because Julius Randle's out and he had to become the guy that needs to chuck everything up because that's usually Julius Randle's role. I think he did a really good job tonight. I think he was poised. Some of his shots didn't fall, but he understood that he needs to do more than just put the ball on the rim. He facilitated the rock way more than we've ever seen. I think this is a season high seven assists, maybe even a career high for RJ Barrett and assists. Seven is very good for RJ because we know that he's developing his game as a playmaker. So it's really good to see because Julius Randle, he leads the team in assists. So it's good to see that RJ knows like, okay, Julius is down. I need to put this team on my back and start facilitating the rock because Julius is the engine of this team. He's the head snake. Everybody really runs behind Julius and Julius finds everybody. So it's good to see RJ Barrett do that, find people down low, dish it out to the corners. And he had a pretty good game tonight for somebody that needs to step up into that number one option role. Even though he shot inefficiently, I am not complaining. 21 points, seven assists, seven boards for RJ Barrett is very good, especially that we got the W. Another great game from Alec Burks. This is like his fifth or six straight game with 20 plus points and he is just absolutely doing such great things for the new york knicks he started today and he looks like a guy that is going to be one of the guys that's going to help us close games he always comes up in the clutch hits those really crucial three pointers late in games with two minutes left and at some point in the fourth quarter the bucks went on like a 5-0 run that tied the game and i was getting a little worried i'm like we need to hit a big shot right now and alec burks did just that hitting a timely bucket to give 
us a three-point lead, and we eventually won the game. So Alec Burks, he continues to just either he comes off the bench or he starts, and he did had a really good all-around game. He didn't did not just score. He finished with 10 rebounds and 5 assists to go along with his 21 points, 7 of 13 from the field, and he had a career-high 6 three-pointers, shooting 50% from beyond the arc, 6 of 12. So... Alec Burks, you got to give him a lot of credit. He's been on a tear the past couple of games. And um, Taj Gibson, he got the start today. He had 34 minutes with six points, four assists, eight boards, and four block shots. So Taj Gibson definitely filled in the role for Mitchell Robson when it comes to protecting the rim. You love to see that from him. And we have a very interesting game from Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox got a lot of minutes tonight in the second half. He did not get any first half minutes, but... Kevin Knox, in 11 minutes of play, he had 5 points and 2 rebounds and 1 steal, but he did a lot when he was out there. He was rebounding the he was rebounding the ball, pushing it, pushing the pace. Whenever he got the ball, he would, you know, pass it right away, and he was hitting, he had one really crucial 3-pointer in the corner. He hit 2 of his free throws. Was it the craziest game ever for Kevin Knox? But no, he came in there, and he gave us quality minutes because we had a lot of injuries. So it's good to see Kevin Knox out there and do a lot of things other than just scoring the ball. Ball, whether it's crashing the boards, pushing the pace, playing solid defense, getting into the passing lane with the seals. So I love the little minutes we got from Kevin Knox. Obi Toppin, to be honest, one of his best games of the season. And listen, it was not nothing special. Obi Toppin obviously has been struggling all season. So for him to have this game for his standards, it's not that bad. Seven minutes of play only with six points, three of four from the field. And he had a really awesome confident mid-range jumper when I was like wow Obi Toppin we never seen that from you you should start doing that more often and then you had an alley-oop so Obi Toppin with only seven minutes of play it's good to see that just because we know as Knicks fans that Obi Toppin has been a little bit of a disappointment he looks very lost out there at times he doesn't have confidence and he doesn't even look at the hoop so it's a good sign to see him take some confident shots that's all I ask for him I don't like when he goes out there for 12 minutes and shoots the ball zero times like that's a problem when he just gets the ball and feels like he needs to pass it so good to see Obi Toppin actually shoot the ball and we also got the first game of Derrick Rose since he uh was out due to COVID and he played very good for Derrick Rose I mean especially coming off being terribly hit by the coronavirus he said that he got hit really hard and it was really a lot that he had to get through mentally and physically to get back in shape shape um Derek Rose he finished with 29 minutes 13 points one assist one rebound one block shot and two steals for Derek Rose he helped us finish the game he was the guy that really gelled everybody together at the end and we needed that veteran presence especially with all the injuries so it was a very timely game for Derek Rose to come back and he had a very good one in my opinion he was going into the lane he was putting up the floaters he was spacing the floor hitting the three pointers and he was playing really good defense so it's good to see Derek Rose back because Whenever he plays, the Knicks have definitely, I think they're like 9-3 and three when Derrick Rose plays. I could be wrong, but it's somewhere around that range. We win way more with Derrick Rose on the squad healthy than Derrick Rose not. So it's good to see him back. Um, another player who had a really good game, Emmanuel quickly off the bench. He finished with 13 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds. And one block shot, one steal for Emmanuel quickly, four of 10 from downtown, shooting four of 10. So Emmanuel quickly continues to be the spark plug. He comes in off the bench, he hits timely shots. And when he's hot from downtown, he looks like so smooth. I mean, it looks like he's shooting free throws at times because Emmanuel quickly is destined to have such a great career with the New York Knicks. And I'm so excited to see him get better and better as he progresses throughout the season and his career down the line, obviously. But everybody on this team tonight played a crucial role in this W because we went up against a very pesky bunch in the Milwaukee Bucks. A lot of young guys that got minutes for the first time and they want to prove themselves saying like, listen, I'm more than just a bench player. This is my opportunity to show what I got. And man, a lot of players in the Bucks showed up. They just kept hitting timely shots, crazy contested three-pointers, every single possession it felt like. So shout out to the Milwaukee Bucks because even though you guys were decimated with injuries, they definitely showed up. But awesome that the Knicks came out with this W because it was one of those games we needed to win, even though we were injured ourselves without our best player, Julius, with Mitch going down with a fractured foot and Reggie still being out. But man, I still want to talk about what I mentioned earlier on in the video to start it off with that Derrick Rose post-game interview how he found out live from Mike Breen that Mitchell Robson fractured his foot and how emotional he got. That really hit me, guys. I really was watching that, and I really got emotional with D-Rose because coming from someone like Derrick Rose, and as we know, the youngest MVP ever 
and his career absolutely got destroyed from his injury concerns and tearing his ACL and stuff. He understands how much it means to somebody that young to just get ridiculed injuries, especially coming off a fractured hand. Mitchell Robinson fought so hard to get back, and then he was looking so good when he got back too. He had one of the best games of his uh, of the season a couple games ago with like 16, 12, and four block shots, and then he goes down with a fractured foot. And the injury looks so weird. I saw the replay of it, and I didn't see anything wrong. It looked like a non-contact fractured injury i don't know how it happened but it's devastating for mitchell robinson because he has so much potential he has so much room to grow he's only getting better and better but he cannot stay on the floor and it's devastating news for the new york knicks as of right now andre drummond the knicks apparently are not are interested that report came out before mitchell robinson got injured and we also find out that the los angeles lakers are the front runners to land andre drummond Will Leon Rose pivot to Andre Drummond and really get him because of the injury to, uh, to Mitchell Robinson? We will find out. But as of right now, it doesn't look like Andre Drummond's com coming to the Knicks because he looks like he's a front runner to land in Los Angeles over on the Lakers. So that does it for this recap video. It was a, a good win, but at the same time, it was costly because of the Mitchell Robinson injury. It definitely is devastating. But that does it for this video. We should be happy. We're two games over 500, and we are looking good. We're on a three-game win streak. We're going up against the Miami Heat on Monday night at the Garden. Hopefully, we can get Julius Randle back because that's going to be a really crucial game. I'm pretty sure the Heat are on like a six-game losing streak, but you can never count them out. They're a very good team, very well coached. They always come in with a really good game plan against the New York Knicks. So we will see what happens. But overall, great game from the Knicks. Getting this W, they understand what they had to do, and they got it done. So comment down below your thoughts of tonight's game. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please do not forget to thumbs it up. And also, if you stayed until the end, comment down below a Statue of Liberty emoji. That does it for this video, guys. I hope you guys had a fantastic day. Let's go Knicks. Peace.